the young volunteers focused on the children as well, creating freedom schools that still exist in another form today. Gwen reports for our American Graduate Series. It's a public media initiative funded by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. Marion Wright Edelman was a young lawyer when she headed south half a century ago, determined to change the world. Were you breeding young activists? Absolutely. Um, and this is when you begin to teach people about the importance of reading. And Frederick Douglass talked about the importance of literacy to anything. Once you know how to read, it's very hard to make you a slave. Um, and secondly, once you learn about your history and learn the question rather than just to accept, you create a new child. Charles Cobb, then a member of the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, or SNCC, had the same thing in mind. We were going to have upwards of a thousand young people from the north, mostly white, coming to the state of Mississippi. So we were also faced with the question of what are you going to do with them? What they did in the face of threats and violence was create a network of alternative schools, sending the college-age volunteers to teach young people about the value of their own history. Yes, I want a register to vote. Yes, I want a decent school. Yes, I want to be able to get a Coke if it's a hot day and there's somebody selling Coke in a restaurant. I think it's hard for people to get their head around. And free schools in part were designed to teach young people that they didn't have to accept. Edelman, now president of the Children's Defense Fund, never forgot about the 40 freedom schools created that long hot summer. They ultimately served about 2,500 students, including some adults. Flash forward to this year, 50 years later, where for six weeks nearly 13,000 students in 29 states and more than 100 cities have begun each day this way. Harambe, a Swahili word meaning let's pull together. Washington, D.C.'s Malcolm X Elementary is one of nearly 200 freedom schools operating this summer in low-income neighborhoods, homeless shelters, juvenile detention centers, and even college campuses. Through field trips, classroom reading, and even singing and dancing, the children are learning more about themselves and about American history. Freedom School teacher Jennifer Snodgrass says the lessons fill in gaps often left unaddressed in traditional classrooms. It's very much setting the foundation for as they get older, they'll be they'll have prior knowledge that they can draw from to help build those facts and their own opinions and thoughts about the civil rights movement. Ten-year-old Sidney Dunbar has recently been introduced to the stories of Martin Luther King Jr. and Nelson Mandela. I learned that all the sacrifices that people had been through just to be free. And eight-year-old Anai Holly has been learning about slavery and segregation. I actually feel upset because it doesn't actually matter about your skin color. It matters about how you are on the inside, not on the outside. For Charles Cobb, this echoes the effort he launched in Mississippi 50 years ago to address educational inequality. We used to call it sharecropper education, designed to do nothing more than to keep blacks available as sharecroppers. <laughs> but it's not all about the past. It's also about the limitations of the present. Abinbola George is the project director at the Malcolm X Freedom School. Sometimes when we do home visits, I see no furniture in the living room. Sometimes, you know, I see no door handles on the locks. You know, it, it's just, it's really hard to see because you realize that if it wasn't for freedom school, some of these children won't have breakfast or lunch. Researchers from the University of North Carolina.
Wednesday, a U.S. warplane struck...